Hello everyone, it's so great to be with you again. I am truly enjoying this. I just wanna say thank you for giving me this opportunity. I am still reading the book, um, The Four Doors by Richard Paul Evans. As you remember in vlog 36, I had one of those days where there was serendipity and everything was synchronous. And I came upon this book in the library and turn to the page of the third door, which is magnifying your life or living your life, the dream. And uh, I shared with you the four points that he had given about how your life is the dream. Well, okay, so I opened the book on uh, door number three. I didn't wanna go back to door number one. So I went on to door number four. There's only four doors, so I went to door number four. And of course, that was the big door. And the door number four talks about love. It talks about um, creating a love-centered map. And of course, you know, you think about love and you could talk about it forever. Love is one of those things that no matter how the scientists and psychologists and all the experts try, they cannot put it in a box. Love is dynamic. It is beyond definition, and that's what makes it so great. It is being and doing love, right? There's so many movies and books, and we still don't know all we can know about love. And I think about the quote by Viktor Frankl that says, love is the highest goal, you know, that we could possibly ever achieve. And that is not easy to do. So when I started reading about the fourth door, and he talks about how we create a love-centered map. You know, when we think of maps, we think of, you know, destinations, and we think of things outside of us, we think of places to go, things to do. He's talking about a love-centered map inside of us. How are we creating these lives or journeys or points inside of us? in our hearts, in our souls, in our life? Are we doing everything from a life-centered map? And this doesn't have to be something, you know, grand. You know, I always tend to overdo it. I think, oh, the whole big picture. I thought of my life. And one of the things that happens in my life, as you know, I take public transportation. And the city where I live is that there's a lot of transportation, public transportation. We have uh, the L, which you could call like a subway. Um, and hundreds of thousands of people ride it per year. At the same time, there are a lot of people that are mentally challenged riding public transportation because mainly they don't have a place to live. A lot of the facilities that used to help them have been closed due to lack of funding. And so you can imagine um, you're riding public transportation and someone who is limited in their ability to comprehend or make choices or whatever the, the uh, case may be, you feel a little put upon. You just, I feel, I'm just like, oh, I'm going to have to, you know, deal with this. And I thought about creating a love-centered map and how, number one, that takes skills. And you only get skills through practice, right? So, um, you know, I'm on the public transportation and there's this person who was being challenged because didn't really know what a stop was, what stop to get on or off. And so I found myself saying, you know what? Yeah, there are two sides to every coin, but it's still a coin, right? A penny could have heads or tails, but it's still a penny. So even though this person and I may have been on different, different sides of the coin, we're still the same coin. We're no different. So I engaged in a conversation and helped this person get to where they needed to be. And I came away with such a different, profound experience. Just one example of building a skill to have a love-centered map because that, that part of my map, my heart and my soul was touched with practicing love. Um, the other thing that Paul Evans uh, talks about is uh, the second way to build this love-centered map is to realize that service is love made visible. Whenever we are of service, we are love. And that could be something as simple as opening the door for someone, 
letting someone go first, not wanting to always win an argument, doing things for other people even when it inconveniences us, which is a big one for me, you know, because we think our time is so limited. But that's love. Service is love. And the third point that he makes about making this soul-centered map is that there's no shortcuts. There's no detours. You have to start with all of you, every bit of you, making this soul-centered map. It's going to take time. But our life is so worth it, right? There's nothing more important than the quality of the life that we live. Our divine worth is centered on love. And I just want to end this with um, a paragraph that he wrote. And it says, Love, for the sake of love, will always be enough. And if our lives are but a single flash in the dark hollow of eternity, then if, but for the briefest of moments we shine, then how brilliantly our light has burned. And as the starlight knows no boundary of space or time, so too our illumination will shine forth throughout all eternity. For darkness has no power to quell such light. And this is a lesson we must all learn and take to heart. That all light is eternal and all love is light. And it must forever be so.